Faith can feel like hearts and butterflies until someone lights a match and burns it all to the ground. Welcome to the Burning Butterflies podcast. The sad thing is, is that there's abuse of every kind within the church. Um, but the spiritual abuse is the stuff that just What's will... a place there shouldn't be abuse? Like, there just shouldn't be abuse in a place that claims Jesus. Well, in a, it just... It ruins your soul. If you're new here, we suggest listening to our prologue episode first. This is the story of two women's journey through spiritual abuse and escaping from toxic church culture while finding hope in Christ. Sometimes it's just the facts, and if you get offended by it, that's that's a you issue. Um, and if, if we can't be mature enough have these conversations, even if some of the topics are difficult, then shame on us. Our worlds have collided. Melissa and I are finally doing church together. Are we at the same church? We attend attend church together. Yes. (laughs) So up until this point, we have about a year, up to two years, that we've been at the church together. Yes. And yeah. so, as of 2011, when I started attending the church, you and I have attended the church yes. at the same time. So um, through 2011 to two, um, leading up to like the beginning of 2013, mm-hmm. um, I know your kids. Yes. I'm your kids as youth you leader. You met my kids long before I ever came to the church. Yes. Like however long it was that my son was venturing to the church for a youth group with his friends. Yes. And I, I loved your kids. And your kids were so cool. Like my best memory of your kids <laughs> yeah. is we build the church building, yeah. right? And we have a youth room. And so we decide, because in, in the church building episode, I mention like we can't, you know, pins on the walls yeah. or anything like that like it's very like it's got that new building smell. new we building can't, but can't it looks like a prison anything. we can't do anything <laughs> fun in it and so we want the kids to help make their youth room yeah. something fun Absolutely. and so we come up we have like a marker board and so we come up with all these ideas what do they want to have and it's everything insanity to they want to have a slide going down into a ball pit <laughs> to just like they think it would be super cool if we had couches yeah. and it felt like a coffee shop. Yeah. And so um, we settle on, we have like a, a foosball table yeah. in the back and we have a mini fridge yeah. that, you know, the kids can put stuff in. We have a bunch of snacks and all this stuff, but we decide we're going to get couches. And so we go over like, look, we're not going to go buy brand new furniture. We're putting it in the youth room. We are, the joke was, the youth room is where couches go to die. Yeah. And so, but we have standards also. Like, we want to make sure they're clean. We're not bringing critters into the brand new right. building, yeah. right? I had gone grocery shopping, so I'm coming back from Walmart. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like a 20-minute drive from Walmart to my house, right? And I get a phone call from your two boys and this third boy. And they call and they ask if I am at the church. Because they had gone past my house and I was at home. Yeah. Um, so to kind of give you a little bit of a visual, there's the high school. About a block away from the high school is my house. And then a mile and a half from my house is the church. Is the church. Yeah. So they have to walk. One of the ways they can walk, because there's multiple streets, you know, that they can go down. But one of the ways they could walk to the church from school is past my house. So they... They're walking actually one block north of me. And they're walking down that street and they see a free couch out on the sidewalk. And they they decide they this couch would be great for the youth room. So they knock on the door. They they ask the lady. They were such good boys. They asked um, if she has pets in the home, if she smoked in the home, if she had a history of bed bugs in the home. Like they asked all these questions, right? And your oldest is like so excited on the phone with me. He's like, Miss Amanda, we ask all the questions. Like, it's clean. These three boys put this couch on their skateboard. So only two of them had skateboards. Yeah. 
I think the yeah the the older one yeah and his friend and his had friend had skateboards and then I think your younger one had a scooter my, yes we had, yeah he probably had a scooter because he's the he's the the older my older son is the dare, daredevil yeah and my younger son is like the engineer yes <laughs> so like the younger one. Um, kept his brother from killing himself on ramps because he was like, oh, that trajectory is not good. Let's, <laughs> yeah. let's fix that. <laughs> so. Yeah. so these boys on skateboards put this full-size couch. This We're not talking a love seat right. or even a little cute chaise lounge. Like, full-on, big, poofy, like, 19, sofa. <laughs> 1990s style yeah. living room sofa. They put that on two skateboards. They push it back towards the high school probably about a block and a half come down to my street a block and push a block down to where my house is and i'm not home yeah so they decide well miss amanda's not at home she must be at the church that's the, the only that's logical. logical so they push it they're pushing it a mile and a half they have to cross a busy street they have to cross a 7-eleven parking lot yeah. And go down a sidewalk that that winds and goes winds over and, a bridge, and it has a, a yeah a, ditch. a cute little footbridge and like it's a cute it's an it's a nice little pretty sidewalk yeah. but to push a couch on skateboard and I could just imagine what these people because it's right along a busy highway, highway. Yeah. I can just imagine what these people saw these boys doing and just thought this is ridiculous but they get there and there's no one at the church and so they call me i have i'm like give me 10 minutes i'll be there i go and i unlock the door they're so excited to yeah. bring the bring the couch it that's like my favorite memory, memory of your boys <laughs> yeah um but yeah i knew them i knew them for a while um i was their youth leader for years um i even helped in that transition phase as we transitioned it into um like the the young couple mm -hmm. that that took youth over for from me um yeah i i knew your boy and i didn't really put two and two together yeah. that you belong to them or they belong to you right. until i was asked to do your wedding pictures yeah. and charlotte pointed it out to me cuz up until then i thought you were just yeah, Froggy's I girlfriend, I in, yeah, because of Froggy. who he brought to church. Yeah. I didn't know you had been at the church. Yeah, for like a year. <laughs> because point. I was, I was in the back with the youth yeah. every Sunday, and I was not getting involved with anything children's ministry. No. So were On you? Purpose. So up until then, you knew I was like the youth lady. Yeah, and like, well, I knew like, so because I had boys in youth age and your yeah. husband so since you know Justin was involved in youth yeah um and my boys gravitated towards Justin yeah you know like just in my head I think I thought you guys were like the youth leader like we had a couple when I was in youth group yeah it was a husband and a wife yeah and so that's how I had it pictured like this this husband and wife that do youth um I think I got email for like um Permission, permission slips, slips and yeah and stuff from you. like i mean like i had a concept of who you are but yeah we had never like met face to face and face or been introduced like i, I didn't yeah. and i know this sounds really weird that like how do your kids go on like overnight trips and stuff like that but we had had a a, a point where we needed parents permission for stuff and we had to have meetings and so because like we and um parents had complained about it and then the nail in the coffin for that was when we did the purity study right and the lady and, was... and the teacher decides that this is a fine time to go over stds and then with put pictures put <laughs> pictures of infected genitalia on a screen with parents and children in the room together and like that's not awkward whatsoever in the church office right so um we were done we were never allowed to have parent meetings right. after that we were only allowed to communicate through email yeah um so and that came from tom tom was the one who made that decision so i know for our listeners some people are going to be like how in the hell would did was she yeah i never here? sat in a meeting and i'm and i'm not well i'm not also the parent who's going to be i not that parent like where i was like oh everything's fine i'll deal with it there's i don't know i didn't yeah. really go and seek out yeah who are my teenagers hanging i mean but also 
Like, it's just how it was. And my son had started yep. going to youth group. My boy started going to youth group before I even went to the church, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, so they were fine and they were and, liking and, it. And, it and we're dealing time. with a small town. I mean, we're not in the yeah. middle of, like, a huge city, and, urban and area. And I know most of the people that they're, I mean, yeah. the kids that my friends were kids with and I know their parents. and you Yeah, know, we're just they're all going things. to youth yeah. together. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, yeah, we have, we, um, I know you from youth and from that. Uh, and then you yeah, got and then married. You, and then at my wedding, and then you're like, oh, you belong to those kids. Oh, those kids belong to you. <laughs> yeah, that was like my my big thing. And then shortly after you got married is when I spoke at the retreat. Yes. Oh, where, yeah. Where I shared about. Which was the first retreat that yeah, I went to. Yeah, where I shared about um, my marriage struggles. Yeah. And used the term hot mess. Yes. In your talk. And. That I had never heard that before, and I thought that was so cool. <laughs> so I was like, "Oh my goodness, what is hot mess? What's that?" <laughs> I thought it was so awesome. So, at that retreat, you sat with Charlotte. Um, or you were. So yes, at that retreat, I sat at the table with Charlotte and her mom. Yeah, and so. That is the retreat where she she was mad. And in the middle of my talk, she actually had to get up and leave because she was so mad at me. Oh, like, did you catch on that she was mad at me? No, not at all. I'm, I'm as competent as I am. I'm so oblivious sometimes. Yeah. And I was just so excited. Like, your talk was so good and so relevant. And other ladies I talked to really loved it. And I was on like cloud nine because we're into, we're into, this is May. So this is before, so I'm married. There's a few cracks in my marriage, but not anything. This is before I've, I've boarded myself up in the house. So I'm just like, oh, and I was distracted because there was a lady there. Um, I did tell the story about how, um, at the concert and at the park event that Froggy was with a quote-unquote friend of his, right? Um, she was at that retreat. She was at that retreat. She hated it. Oh, she was mad. Oh, this is a church retreat, and this woman wanted to beat my ass. Like, yeah. she was scary. Like, I was like, yeah, she, would, she was a, me, she was a little gangster. Yeah. Me, you yeah. know? Um, and so, yeah, that was, whew, that was, I was distracted by that. But I thought your talk was really cool. I was having a good time. Uh, there were a lot of strange things that go on at retreat that I was like, this is weird. Um, and not a lot of strange things, but like I had to have a prayer partner with some lady I didn't even know, but I still love that lady to this day because she was my very first retreat prayer partner. And I feel like I have a special relationship with her. Um, and like you were supposed to have brought a candle. Yeah. I missed that in the memo. So I got given a candle that I could give to my prayer partner and I got a candle and they did the feet washing thing, which was like, oh, that was the year we washed feet. Whack. That is just wackadoo. I forgot we washed feet. Whack. So dumb. Yes. And it was just weird. And I'd never been to a retreat yeah. before. And there was a lot for yeah. me. We're going to have to do a whole episode just on the insanity that was retreat. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just because so anyway, there was creepy ass shit. I forgot we washed each other's feet. I forgot yeah. we did that. And so um, in my my world there was a lot going on and yeah. so oblivious yeah i was just you know social butterflying my life away because that's what i do so yeah but so that's all i remember is i remember you saying hot mess and then yeah. i remember telling charlotte that woman was so awesome i was so excited like i was gonna tell everybody about your talk because it was awesome wasn't that awesome that was so awesome and then also that i had never heard the word hot mess before yeah yeah but so how did Charlotte react when you said that? Like, was she like, yes? Or was she... No, it was like... Uh, like, there was no reaction. Like, yeah. no response. Because she was pissed. Like... Charlotte was pissed. And I thought it was me. I get that response a lot because I'm a lot. And so when somebody wa- runs up to you and they're like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to see you! And then you're like, oh, okay. okay. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. I thought it was me. Yeah. Because... I'm so much. Yeah. Um, turns out that probably was not the case. It was me because I was too much. This is like my whole life story. <laughs> I come as you are. It's, I thought it was all good. Turns out <laughs> it wasn't. Yes. 
So we did that. Um, you had mentioned that you uh, were helping start a ministry. Yes. Yeah. So you had, I had kind of been involved just kind of helping. So a woman had like a, a food pantry that she ran out of her garage. Yes. In her basement and stuff. Um, and so I'd kind of helped her. She. And this was like prior to me coming to the church. Mm -hmm. like... And so all of this kind of went at the same time. So yeah. she had that going on. And then I was doing, I was doing like a ministry for younger girls, tween age. So mm -hmm. they're not quite youth age, but children's ministry stuff is kind of babyish yeah. for them. And so I started a ministry that I called three G's. Mm -hmm. Um, it was girls growing God's way. And I just, I made it up myself. Yeah. And I, my daughter's attended. Yep. And so I had your girls in there. There was a lady. Um, she had a daughter that was going into youth group and then she had a younger daughter too. And so she thought it was something, she grew up with something called American Heritage Girls, mm -hmm. um, which was basically like, we're going to teach the girls skills to be housewives. Okay. And they're going to earn badges. On so like, this is like the Christian narrative version of Girl Scouts. Yes, yes, very Not much so. You can so. be a strong, independent Barbie, but so you can be housewife Barbie. <laughs> yes, um, but when that woman realized that I was also teaching them things like how do you read your Bible for yourself? Um, how do you think for yourself? Yeah. I, like I was trying to instill confidence in the yeah. girls. Yeah. And, um, so when she found out it was not a, like, how to be the best homemaker, yeah. um, she didn't like it. Yeah. And so there was a big argument, um, and the, at this point, the lady who was doing, like, the pantry in her garage was helping me with 3Ds. Oh, okay. So we had had a huge argument, me and her, and this other lady who didn't like the way we were doing things, and... Pastor Tom. Yeah. Like, we have a huge, giant... We have to have a meeting our, about it. Yeah. That meeting does not go well. It did not go well. Um, and so, the lady who was doing the pantry in her garage ended up, like, she left the church. Yes. Which is and, how I ended up... And so... On we, a ministry team. Yes. That. There was, there was a... The ministry. There was a need. We needed to be able to... Um, yeah, what she was doing was good. Yeah, the it was beneficial. It was a good idea to keep that ministry that she had and in her so home going. And so she was doing it on her own, yeah. like on the side. Yeah. And, and so now that she was leaving, the church really wanted it to keep going. So we had to transition it and turn it into a church ministry. Yes. Yeah. And I was a part of that, that transition. launch of vision, mission, and getting yes. it set up as a church ministry. Yes. yes. And so... You came to my house. I did. It was weird. <laughs> because I think my I think my boys were in school and my, my daughter was like taking a nap or something. Yeah. I just got a phone call out of nowhere yeah. that I needed to come and meet with you ladies. Because I had done like all the church website stuff and everything from the church office. And they needed me to come down there and help you. Yeah, well, we had had everything done. Like, we had done all Yeah, it was just a matter of, like, and, and launching we like, okay, it and putting it on to, the website. Yeah, we need to launch this. And they're like, you need Amanda for that. And we're like, okay. So then they yeah. called you, and then they're like, yeah, you can't be. They're like, can you go to her house? And we're like, yeah, we'll go to her house right now. Yeah. So, yeah, you guys showed up. And I remember, like, you sat down in my downstairs living room, and we got you set up on the church website. And, yeah. and this and, is before the retreat. And oh. I don't realize, because this happened in April. Okay. And the retreat was in May. May, okay. And so, I mean, this is like... But so, I'm also in, like, the prime time of and my I, life. I have no idea that you who spoke is the same lady whose house that I was, was at a month earlier. <laughs> Probably because, like... And, and I don't have any idea that... Okay. I stand up to speak at there, and I, like, have makeup on, and I'm dressed... I'm sure you guys came to my house, and I was, like, probably, like messy bun and sweatpants no, and... like like each place i've met you is a separate place so we in, ever together. in context so it like doesn't go together of you yeah in my head yeah it's not until i was the picture later, church picture lady 
yeah, the like, church website yeah, lady. So I don't recognize that youth when group did lady. I realize that you. Yeah, like at some point it all converges uh -huh. through our conversations over the years that like I've been able to go with like whatever situation we were in. Then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, that was you. So you add that into your, yeah. oh, that was you. Okay. So like you've become one person over the yeah. years. But in this very beginning time, the lady. It was kind of a blob. Who was youth, who was the lady that I went to her house, which I was totally impressed with like how organized like you were and uh, because like, I'm in a house full of ADHD and, and like you were just coming out or transitioning out of daycare but yeah. like I, I'd known you had had a daycare and everything was so organized and I was like this is a this is like the goal like that became a standard that I was uh, trying to reach for I was like how would that lady I was in that lady's house so what did she do I I could do what that lady did like I mean, that became a thing <laughs> yeah you were that lady uh, for a long time. So you, it, it never connected. So there were like, honestly, 20 yeah. of you until some point, those identities all started merging together. Yeah. And so you even were a part of like some youth stuff. Like, I mean, there's pictures of me doing youth stuff. Like, I think we went on a hike one year and yeah, which I didn't go on the hike. No, but your ki your kids, hike, and kids and Froggy, yeah, and me and I my mean, husband. There's been a lot of things, yeah, that we've attended yeah. together, and, and that we didn't even realize until we really started timelining this out and picking yeah. apart and be like, oh, oh, you were there, oh, you were I there. was there, yeah, we did that meeting, yeah, because <laughs> we forgot about three G's. Um, the the big, you know, free carnival yeah, on the, the park, park event, the summer park event. Um, you know, I was always there doing stuff. There were some years where. Like when I was doing in-home daycare and I was like in the like trenches of my, like now I see that it was depression, but back then I didn't see that right. it was depression. I didn't want to do a whole lot. And the thought of standing in the park in the heat all day long was just like, that was a lot for me to be able to like handle at that yeah. time. So I offered to like babysit people's kids at my house. Yeah. Um, for the yeah, like stuff. you want to yeah. go volunteer? Bring me your kids. I'll watch them at my house in the air conditioning. I like, um, my first 2011 was my first park event, and I worked at the toy the prize booth mm -hmm. with the American Heritage Lady. Oh, um, okay. is where I ended up, and then the second year would I forgot been, she ran the prize yeah. which would have been 2012. Mm -hmm. um, I would did sound for the concert that went on in the park. Yeah, so I was in the sound. Um. So kind of the big thing that culminates our, um, you know, worlds colliding and brings us kind of to the conclusion of the year 2012, um, you know, you had talked about, you had, um, you know, boarded up your house yeah. and then, you know, Froggy came back, yeah. Froggy's back in, um, we're all going to do things right. Yeah. Right. And right at this time in the men's ministry. So... Um, because my husband shared, um, I shared at the 2012 retreat yeah. about, um, my marriage struggles and everything. My husband shared at the men's retreat that I think it was like July or August that, because the men always went camping. Yeah. It so was August. Yeah. Um, so they, my husband shared, and so it was a very common theme through men's ministry at that point like really like okay we've got to kind of pull our crap together and what does it look like to be godly men and yeah, there was a big surge at that yes. time of like godly men and, and so building it, the men yes, in the church because it wasn't just it wasn't just my husband and it wasn't just froggy right. there were we had an instance where we had a woman who was cleaning the church and a man who was on the worship team that were married to other people, but like they kind of did the do in the church with each other, and um, yeah, so like we had a lot of things running around. There, there's time. there's a lot of stuff going down, and so it is a very common thing that like the men need to pull their crap together, yeah, kind of thing. Um, but again, no one's coming out and saying stuff, really, honestly. Like, there's a, a very few tiny number of men standing up and saying hey I screwed up this is what I did um let's talk about it and let's talk about how we do better as men 
Um, there's not a lot of that going on. There's a lot of sweeping under the rug going on. And so this summer is when the movie Courageous comes out. The, yeah. the Christian movie Courageous comes out. And in that movie, the men in that movie sign a contract to be manly men. I don't know. What is it? Like, we are men. Manly men. I don't know. All I'm thinking of is right. men in tights at this no, point. No, I know. Yeah, the movie had come out. The movie but, had come like, out in it's, 2011. Yeah, so and it's... so it was like, the, it was traveling the church scene. Like, yes. You, you had to like, watch it. And... We watched it as a church. Yeah. Like, you came, yep. we played it in the sanctuary, we could all come and watch. And so we culminate this year and of 2012. I feel like this was the beginning of, like, the Christian movie Oh, yes. Like, scene. because... Like that. This because we had facing genre. the giants and then this yeah. was the big like oh, next right. thing yeah. from those yeah. brothers yeah. who did facing the giants yeah. they, they right. did courageous and so that launched the big campaign for men in the church yes and we're gonna be man, men and we're gonna you know take care of our families and we're gonna be honorable and all of these things so all of the men in the church they take that thing that's in the movie courageous yeah. and our church completely rips it off like, come as you are, completely rips it off, puts their logo on the paper. Yeah. Like, it does Makes not... Makes it a see... big, huge, formal document. Yeah. Like, the Declaration of Independence. A huge <laughs> propaganda. Yes. And this is coming right after, like, this huge moral failure in my home. Like, I yes. mean, like, this is, like, right backed up to, like, there's a lot of pressure you know, and and I just got done. I boarded myself up in my house. My husband had so, to leave. He comes back, and then like I'm really, volunteering. Weeks, yeah, we're signing. He's signing this. I'm gonna be back on the straight and narrow yeah. path. I'm volunteering in the office at this point, yeah. and I hear about some woman who went off the deep end. Yeah, she's lost it. She's gone off the deep end. And she's boarded herself up, and we, we have to send these two women to basically, like, talk her off a ledge because she just, like, and I don't know it's you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't realize it's you for probably another couple years yeah. when that story is finally used against you yeah. in a public way. But at that point, I don't know that's don't know you. Mean. I just know some poor lady is having some the roughest. Some gone off the deep end. <laughs> yeah. So... They done broke her. So we've covered a lot in chapter one. Yeah. We really have. And so chapter two is where we are going to get into the the nitty gritty of the, yeah, of the our, inner workings. Our individual lives at the church, but also our intertwined lives at the yes. church and and how that, that plays out. <laughs> yes. So thank you for joining us for chapter one. And we look forward to having you join us again for chapter two. Burning Butterflies is a listener-supported podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by our amazing supporters on Patreon. Follow the link in our show notes to learn how you can become a Patreon supporter too. Supporters get exclusive access to bonus content each month, including outtakes, cut content, and supporter-only episodes. If you've enjoyed this episode, please leave us a rating on your listening platform. Burning Butterflies is a production of Asha Media. Thank you for listening.